Guten Abend, werte Zuschauerinnen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To find the culprit in a case of an obvious crime, criminology offers different ways to approach and view it. Besides the examination of indicators and the questioning of witnesses, the old Romans already asked a simple question, qui bono, which means who benefits from it. In this broadcast, we are going to present some of the information that reached us concerning the crash of the MH17 plane in eastern Ukraine. With the question, who would benefit from the MH17 plane crash, we will shed some light on the possible motives. Here is the information which reached us. First, the website flightaware.com enables people enthusiastic about aviation to follow flights and their positions almost live. With it you can easily portray flight routes of airlines on maps. Everyone can check what flightaware.com showed concerning the flight MH17, which is that contrary to 10 prior flights, this flight was diverted across the crisis region. In addition to that, Malaysian Airline reports that the pilots of the misfortune machine had just that day been advised by the Ukrainian air traffic control to lower their altitude about half a kilometer. Second, the former American Brigadier General Kevin Ryan director at the renowned U.S. elite University Harvard made the following statement. It is unlikely that pro-Russian separatists gained control of such a highly developed weapon system and even used it for shooting down a passenger plane. You need a lot of training and a lot of coordination even for firing such a missile, let alone hitting something. That is not the kind of weapon a few guys just quickly drive out of the garage and start firing. Third, if the airplane was hit by a surface-to-air missile, SAM, of the type BUK, so-called beach, it would have already been shredded at high altitudes by the many projectiles released and would have gone down wildly dispersed in many small parts. The condition of the wreckage and corpses at the place where it went down shows that the airplane hit the ground almost entirely intact. This shows that it was rather shot down by a more conventional fighter jet, which disables the machine. Andrei Katapolov, head of the operative headquarters of the general staff of the Russian armed forces, reported that according to radar data, the MH-17 was accompanied by a Ukrainian fighter jet Su-25 shortly before it went down. The Su had definitely been able to hit the passenger machine with its weapons. Neither Americans nor Russians have any proof, radar or infrared data, of a SAM missile. Finally the question, who would benefit from the crash of the MH-17? We clearly showed in our past broadcast that the USA, supported by the wrong reporting of Western media, is massively steering towards a bigger escalation with Russia. Considering this goal, the unclarified plane crash seems to be a welcome event to the Western media. For them the culprit is clear. With highly emotional, escalating tones, they inflame the European population against Russia. The British Daily Mail headlined on the front page, Putin killed my son. The Daily Express claimed, Putin caused the plane crash. And the Sun even said, Putin's plunderers rob British victims. The German, Austrian and Swiss newspapers all blew the same horn. The East Ukrainian freedom fighters, however, do not seem to have any reasonable motive to shoot down a passenger airplane. Neither does Russia, nor does it blame anyone for this. Instead, Russia issued 10 constructive questions to clarify what happened. It will be interesting to see how these are going to be answered. We'll keep you updated, stay tuned and goodbye.